All right, welcome to the third of the three musketeers here in computer graphics, and this is Adobe InDesign. Adobe InDesign is a page layout or desktop publishing program. Anything that you hold in your hands that is made up of multiple pages is going to be Adobe InDesign. So I've started it up here, and first thing I'm going to do is Window Menu, Workspace, and you'll notice in the list of workspaces, we have two called Essentials. Okay, these are kind of like Adobe Illustrator. Essentials is if you've worked in this program for a while. Essentials Classic is the one I prefer, the one with all the features. So I'm going to go with that, Essentials Classic. Now that brings me into the InDesign workspace and I can see a couple of panels here on my screen that are left over from the last time I was working in this. So just like all the other programs, you wanna go back to Window, Workspace and Reset Essentials Classic. Okay, that is also gonna open up the Creative Cloud Libraries and I'm not signed into that feature so I'm gonna just going to click the double arrow head up here. Let's collapse that. And that still takes up too much room. So why even have it here if I'm not going to use it? So I'm just going to tear it out and close it. And then instead of keeping my panels listed in this name view, I'm going to hit the double arrow head and just expand them so they're ready to go. Okay, and that's going to work good. What I would also do, like in the other programs, is click at the top of the toolbox, make a smaller two-column toolbox. And Adobe InDesign came in after the Adobe Illustrator and the Adobe Photoshop application. So a lot of stuff from Illustrator has been borrowed and put back into this program. So you can see the color panel is the same. You have swatches. You have the stroke panel. Over here, you've got a fill and a stroke, a black arrow, a white arrow, a pen tool, a type tool, rectangles, ellipses. You got a lot of the stuff from Illustrator that has been borrowed and incorporated back here into InDesign. Okay, the only difference is pages. You're gonna be working in multiple pages in InDesign. Today, we're just gonna be working on a single page flyer but you have the same layers panel and all that other stuff. So I always talk about Illustrator because it's more frequently used, but more and more people nowadays are looking for InDesign skills. So this is your quick introduction to it. Okay, like the other programs, once I've set up my workspace, I need to set up my preferences. So I go to InDesign menu, preferences, general. And you can see this huge list of preferences here. InDesign is the more technical program, so it has a ton of preferences. But honestly, 90% of these are set to their defaults and you should be just fine. So I'm really just gonna go over the ones that affect the way we work, okay? I use the legacy new document dialog box, just used to work in the old way. Um, been working in it for a long time. Interface, this is your default interface. All the rest of these are just simple um, settings. Greek vector graphics, I turn that off. Under type, let's see if there's anything here that I need to change. Um, see type. Most of this to me is just blah, 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 blah. No, this looks fine to me. Okay. Um, advanced type. No, don't really need anything there. Composition. Let's see. Justify text next to an object. No, don't need any of that. Okay. Units and increments. This is where I technically start. For the origin of my ruler, because sometimes you're going to be laying out two pages side by side, like when you open a magazine and you set it down on your table, you're going to see the left page facing the right page. That's called a spread. Well, I want my ruler to line up on the edge of every page. My horizontal is inches. 
and my vertical measurements are going to be inches, so those two match. Um, grids, if I need a grid, which I, I don't think I've ever used them, um, I'll just keep that default. Guides, these are your default setting for guides. They all work fine as they are. Um, dictionary, I'm not really adding anything to my dictionary, so I don't need to do anything with that. Spelling, it'll highlight misspelled words if I do an auto correct or a spell checker. So this is fine. Auto correct, I'm not going to enable that yet. I'm not doing tons of type. So no need to do that. Notes, that's if you want to leave notes for a client. I'll skip that. I don't track any changes. I don't use the story editor. There's a lot of features in here. It's good to know that InDesign has all these things. But I've been working in this for years and years, and most of this I've never even had to use. So I'll skip story editor as well. Display performance is the one we absolutely have to look at. Okay, right up here, it says the default is a typical view. And I'm gonna keep it on that, okay? Adjust view settings is typical. These are your default settings, which means when you go to look at images, they're gonna look pixelated. And that's not what you want, okay? Because InDesign pages are gonna be laid out on the screen and then you're gonna be bringing in other graphics from Illustrator, other photos from Photoshop. You don't want them looking all pixelated. So on day one of my InDesign classes, I always tell people, set your default to high quality and set your view settings also to high quality. Set everything to high quality. You'll be better off in the long run. Okay, GPU performance, there's nothing to change there. This is all good. It's really just setting up my units of measurement and my display performance. The rest, like I said, is blah, blah, blah. These are all defaults and you'll be fine in this program. So I'm gonna click okay. Now that you've set up your workspace, you've set up your uh, essentials workspace, we ran through the preferences really quick. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to lay out a one-page flyer.